In this video, we're going to look at the difference between imperative code and declarative code. This might be something you've come across when reading about some new technology. And they say you write the code in a declarative fashion or the code is declarative. And you're wondering, wait, is that a good thing or a bad thing? And what does it imply for what we intend to do? The discussion about code that is imperative or declarative has to start with the idea of state. So state in general says, what is the current condition? What is the current situation? Say, for example, for certain entities, it could be its location, it could be its shape, it could be its temperature, it could be the number of atoms within it. Whatever constitutes a clear definition of what is this current situation would be what would, it would be its state. So, for example, in the physical world, we talk about a solid state, a liquid state and a gaseous state. right? And can these entities, right? say, for example, water can go between these states when it is uh, when different temperatures are applied to it right so and in each of these states they have a different property and the movement from state to state involves some action right and at the end of that action there is a particular state in the same way systems have state right so for example when you have a mobile phone right when you get it new there's nothing installed on it that is a state and then when you perform the action of installing an application then its state changes where it also has its application now and then when you install yet another application, it changes state again. Even while you use the system, right? Um, in this case, a mobile phone, the state changes. For example, when you make a call, its state currently is that it is on a call, right? And the data is going to be different. The uh, amount of data uh, that is stored and that is transferred is going to continuously change. And at any point in time, you will be able to derive a state for that system. When you take system scale uh, or system state at the scale of the cloud right you're looking at various things say for example for a resource right for a virtual machine in this case you could say i need a virtual machine with 10 cpus i need a virtual machine that has got 20 gb hardness right and that would be the current state of the machine right that would be the uh, current state and of course that change could uh, the state could change another time you might say you know what i want to increase the number of cpus from 10 to 20 and the amount of hard disk space from 20 gb to 100 gb right so in this case there has been a state transition from the original state of 10 cpus and 20 gigabytes of storage to 20 cpus and 100 gigabytes of storage and that would be at a virtual machine level right at the project level maybe it's a combination of all these virtual machines where you say at one point in time we have two virtual machines with certain configuration handling the demand and in certain other cases you've got more virtual machines so increase the number of virtual machines to um, absorb increased demand right and during this change whether it's at a resource level or at the project level or at the entire um, vpc level or at the organization level everything has state and in general state management is hard say for example let us say we want for virtual machines as part of our setup and one of them goes down right what is the way in which we'll find out hey something has gone down either we have to constantly keep checking or there has to be an event mechanism that says you know what something has gone down do something about it so somebody has to then go back and change state again to bring it back to where we want which is four virtual machines what if three or four people who are in the operations team see that message at the same time and all of them at the same time install four virtual machines, right? One virtual machine each. So now suddenly instead of having four, you've got three plus four, which is seven virtual machines. And now somebody has to go in and say, oh, you know what? Oh, there's way more uh, virtual machines allocated than required for our desired state. So now somebody has to go shut it down, right? And there's this constant problem of what is the current state so that we can move it to the next state, right? So we have to have a good way to identify current state and then also have the actions to move it to the next state that we uh, want it to move to. Now, in English, uh, when you look at the sentence types, there are a few of these, right? So the four uh, types could be like declarative sentences, imperative sentences, interrogative and exclamatory. So we'll just look at the declarative and imperative because it gives some indication of what we are um, doing here in terms of code. So a declarative sentence makes an assertion, right? It is declaring states and facts. So, for example, they could, they could say, somebody is standing up, right? This person is standing up, he or she is standing up. 
and that would be the state in which that person is. Similarly, when it comes to a virtual machine, there you could say there are three CPUs in this virtual machine. So at that point in time, right, there are three CPUs and that is the current state of the virtual machine. An imperative sentence, on the other hand, it issues a command, right? So it is uh, ordering an action, it is directing an action. So for example, instead of saying, uh, if the declarative sentence is, he is standing up, the imperative sentence would be stand up, right? You're very issuing a command. And if we wanted to add CPUs, we would say add another CPU to this VM, right? So it's a direction, it's an order that is given for an action, right? It's not describing the current state. So in coding also, this would be the kind of approach where the declarative sentence uh, on the declarative code is stating a particular desired state, whereas the imperative code says, here is how you do something. In the imperative, as I just said, it lists steps to get to a desired state, right? So you are explicitly mentioning what are the steps, right? Saying, do this, do this, do this, and the state is going to be implicit because at the end of doing the specified number of actions, you are expecting to be in a certain state. The state itself is not explicitly mentioned, it's automatic, it's implicit, right? So for example, if um, you wanted to get a burger, one way would be to instruct somebody to say how to make the burger, right? For example, you'd say pick up pun, pick up knife, cut it parallel to bottom, set lower part on table, place letters, so on and so forth, right? So in that example, you're issuing commands for every step so that it goes from state to state. In the declarative approach, you're just specifying the end desired state, right? And you are allowing the system to say, you know, the system knows how to handle itself to move it from whatever is the current state to get to the desired state. So in this case, your, uh, the speci you specify the state, which is explicit, and the steps to get there are done by the system, which means they are implicit, right? It's up to the system to decide how it wants to get to that desired state. So for example, in the burger example, you could go to a restaurant and say, give me a burger with two slices of cheese and no onions, right? So you express the end uh, state, express the desired uh, result, and it is up to the system, in this case, the chef you know, who was making the burger to get you, those, uh, get you that burger in that state. Uh, the kind of languages that would be uh, imperative would be things like C, C++, Java, Go, Python, and declarative examples would be HTML, SQL, there's Terraforms, HCL, Kubernetes, YAML, configuration language. So if you look at an example of code that is imperative, in this case, I've used um, you know, sample code from Go that I've just randomly made up. In this case, we're saying, hey, we want a certain number of replicas, right? So let's say we want three replicas. We make first a check on the state saying that are the replicas, current number of replicas more than three? If the replicas are number than th more than a number more than three, then we have to run a process to say from for the number of uh, replicas that are excessive, let's shut down those, right? So replicas minus three, if there were five, this will run it, say a couple of times, right? It'll run two times and it'll shut down those replicas one by one. Of course, this is just pseudo code. Um, don't read too much into it. If instead, if the replicas were less than three, then what would you have to do? You'll have to start new replicas, right? So again, you find the difference. And for that difference, you start uh, creating new replicas of whatever is the virtual machine you want. And of course, this is very um, simplified code. There's a lot more dependencies further from this, right? So there'll be the code for shutdown replica. What is a replica, right? Uh, how do you uh, pull the replica? How do you get the information of the replica? How do you induce an action to create a replica or shut down a replica? So there's a lot more code that will be there to support uh, a situation like this. On the other hand, declarative code simply says, I need three replicas, right? So there's an example from uh, Kubernetes um, and it uses the YAML syntax to say, we want three virtual machines running Nginx and as the uh, base machine, right? The, the template that you want to replicate, use this particular uh, image. And of this image, make three copies. And that would be pretty much all you have to do. Because the system now says, Kubernetes now says, okay, I understand what needs to be done. And if I have zero, I'm going to add three. If I have five, I'm going to reduce it to three, right? So 
the code when it comes to uh, declarative programming languages like typically when you write declarative code the code is going to be the amount of code is going to be much lesser and the handling of state is not your requirement right is not your responsibility sorry and uh, you just have to mention end uh, end goal the desired result and everything is taken care of for you now obviously when you write declarative code somebody internally has to take that um, you know the end result that you want and ex I mean do some conduct some actions to ensure that it gets there right so invariably declarative code in the end will have some kind of uh, imperative code underneath but for a person who is just wanting to manage Kubernetes or just wants to write um, Terraform code they don't have to do all the actions it becomes much easier for them to work at this higher level abstraction rather than trying to do it at a lower level abstraction right? and that is the convenience of uh, declarative code or one of the conveniences of declarative code um, so in a quick comparison then right the imperative code specifies how to get to decide state so the steps are defined right whereas the end state is going to be implicit whereas in the declarative approach the end state is uh, explicit and the steps to get there are implicit right so it is automatically taken care of by the system you will usually find in the imperative code statements like if and for and all because you need to do a check for current state and if the current state has a number of changes to be made you might choose to put it in a loop in declarative code typically you would be specifying dependencies right uh, here is the virtual machine we want to run here's the image with uh, on which it is based here is a policy a security policy that we want to apply uh, we might also give the uh, like count statements for example we need three replicas or we need five virtual machines right those are typically the kind of uh, code statements you'll find there are of course um, uh, i mean this is not exclusive you'll find um, certain state declarations in uh, imperative code and certain kind of looping and conditional statements in declarative code also but in general uh, this could be something um, uh, this is something that you generally see right? in terms of the abstraction from the developer level uh, this gets quite low level into coding you need to understand the system um, uh, more intensely whereas in the case of declarative code it's usually uh, an abstraction which is high level right if you understand the domain that is fairly good enough in this case in imperative case developer makes the decisions while in declarative code the system makes the decisions in imperative programming skills are usually required whereas in declarative typically domain knowledge system knowledge is required where you know what the states are right not the actions to um, perform to get to these different states um, <coughs> state management is a developer's responsibility in imperative code and in declarative code it is to the uh, it's a system's responsibility right and as i said state management is quite difficult right and it becomes easy in certain um, use cases to just have a system handle it for you uh, comparatively i would say the imperative code is more difficult to apply in terms of the skill sets that you need to develop in terms of the amount of code that you have to write whereas a lot of the declarative code that we see they are comparatively easier to apply right? so those would be the key differences between imperative code and declarative code if you find these videos useful consider supporting me on patreon or buy me a coffee also don't forget to like share and subscribe for more learning videos on awesome gcp